Hello, everybody. My name is Shama Ko. I am the program director here at Girls and Geese. We are super excited. Uh, we have yet another awesome Girls and Geese Ask a Black Belt. We have a fantastic uh, person on here today. We have Hillary Williams. Let me go ahead and get her on. Yay! Hey! How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Oh, it's so good to see your face. It's you been too. too long. <laughs> your background beats mine by far. Yeah, I, 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 I can't beat this. <laughs> it's amazing. Lucky to have gotten trapped here in Hawaii for this horrible situation. You're in Birmingham now, right? Birmingham, yep. Uh, so yeah. I went from Arkansas to Alabama. Uh, not that different. <laughs> <laughs> Quite similar. Quite similar. No, so so for those of us tuning in, um, I mean, you are you have been a huge, huge figure in the jujitsu sport. Tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for everybody that's listening in here today, or watching. Should I say? <laughs> I uh, I'm a has been, <laughs> but no, uh, I don't back think. back in my day. So I started jujitsu in 2006. Um, got very quickly addicted to it. Um, I got in a very lucky situation where my coaches had literally just started their gyms or their gyms. So it was almost like semi privates every single time for my yeah. first six months because of very small classes. Um, ate it alive, decided I needed to go to Brazil, um, went to Brazil for the first time as a purple belt. I've been nine or 10 times now. Um, mm -hmm. Ended up winning a few things. World of Pan Am. <laughs> Just uh, a so few. <laughs> I won Pan Am's at um, white, blue, purple, and brown slash black, but I didn't actually win it when I had a black belt. Um, and then Worlds was purple and brown slash black. Uh, awesome. Yeah. And and I, uh, you are one of the first females, or was it first American, second female, or second American to win the Worlds? Is that right? I was the second American woman, um, and then fourth or fifth American overall, depending on what you count Robert Drysdale, so maybe like 4.5. Um, I love Robert. I don't know yeah. what to do with this. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so Lana Stefanik was the first, uh, and she is amazing. Um, she, she won the year before me, weight and absolute. Uh, and we were roommates in both Abu Dhabi and World Pro, and so I just, I love her to death. <laughs> no, she's a fantastic person. I love, Lana keeps it real. That's that's my favorite part about Lana, is she tells it as it is. There's no sugar coating. There's no BS. It is what it is, and that's the best part for me. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, so for all of those uh, that are watching right now, uh, how this works is this is our Ask the Black Belt segment. It's your opportunity to post questions, um, and uh, Hillary will answer them live on our stream. If not, Hillary and I will just sit here and converse, have a conversation, and you guys get to listen in. <laughs> I'm not either of those. <laughs> So, so you've gone from being a world cast athlete, uh, one of the, I consider you a pioneer in women. I consider you a pioneer in jujitsu, and especially for women. Uh, I think you went out there and you proved so many things. I mean, I remember when I first met you in Brazil and I was kind of starstruck at first. I was like, oh my God, there's Hillary. <laughs> It's so, it, it's so weird because I have the world's like biggest case of imposter syndrome and Hi, uh, but thankfully most jujitsu people have very short attention spans, so nobody <laughs> knows who I am anymore. No, they do. <laughs> well, they if they don't, they will after today for sure. <laughs> well, so I'm... so tell me what what it was like. I mean, you you competed in a time. You came from a fairly small academy in Arkansas. <laughs> And so you took it upon yourself while you were going through college and I think through medical school even to, no, okay, just through college, to um, just eat up as much jujitsu as you could. You traveled from coast to coast. I think you were working with Naga, mm -hmm. is that right, at one point? Uh, mm -hmm. And then you transitioned to IBJJF 
um, refing, but you were competing in, I mean, anywhere you looked, there was Hillary uh, competing, refing, coaching. Tell us what it was like in that time for you. You know, I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of stories from that, but tell us what was it like taking on that role and, and just kind of taking on really encompassing what the jujitsu lifestyle is? It, it was sheer blissful ignorance and I loved it. I just didn't know any better. You know, I, I was so young that like I hadn't yet had those voices develop in my head that tell you no. Uh, and so I just went for it. Like I had no concept of like cross training crayonchi or like that not being cool. So I would just go to a different gym every weekend and then I'm here, I might as well compete. Uh, it was it, like, you know, I was, I had no responsibility, no bills. So I got to train three times a day. Uh, and it, it's crazy looking back. I'm like, how did, how did I have that energy? Uh, Cause I've officially reached the age where I don't. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know, I was just consumed by it. And I do kind of have that personality. Like when I go for something, I go all the way. Um, and it, you know, like working with Naga was a blast. I definitely shouldn't have been working with those guys when I was 19 years old. Like New England <laughs> guys will corrupt the young mind very easily. There. They, are, they are hilarious. I love them all to death. Um, and then, um, you know, it was, and I, I say this a lot, but like I was very much kind of like a child of the community um, because so many places let me like sleep on their mats or they let me like have a couch and, you know, uh, people would let me paint murals in order to pay for my training. And like, there were so many, so many times when people helped me that they absolutely did not have to, uh, that I just... I don't know. It, it's a little bit surreal and I'm very appreciative. And my dog is very needy. <laughs> she's like, you're talking or here. She's like, you're talking. I want attention. <laughs> Pay attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so coming, um, so going from living that lifestyle where you're just engulfed in it and there's every waking moment while maintaining college, while preparing to go to medical school, was that transition from having your life completely engulfed in jujitsu and then transitioning into medical school and then onto a journey to being a neurologist, was that, was that a hard transition or was that something that you were kind of ready for at the time? It, I was ready for it, but it was, it was really, really hard. And I kind of try to use my experience to not let others make the same mistake. Um, you know, so my, my final year of, college my senior year I was trying it was competing at black belt um I was writing my undergrad thesis I was on the equestrian team for some stupid reason um I was trying to hustle to pay for the jujitsu uh and I was in my last year of pre-med and it was I literally got to where I was my schedule was sleeping four or five hours a night from midnight or four, to four or five a.m and I would skip Tuesdays just every Tuesday would be an all-nighter and it, oh it broke me physically. Um, and like, I knew when I, I think it was Pan Ams that I did, that I was like, I gotta, I gotta stop. And I knew that World would be my last one for a while. Um, <clears throat> and then, so the idea was that for, for it to unload the burden, right? To allow me to just enjoy jujitsu again. But I, I did it the wrong way. I got into medical school and it turns out a lot of that drive that I had was ADHD. And so all of a sudden I'm not <laughs> exercising and I'm trying to absorb like, like medical school stuff. It's not, it's not hard. Like the information you can sit down and grasp. It's just, it's so much at one time and my brain just stopped. And so I actually got real depressed and like had a rough transition. Um, but now I, I use that experience to like, all the little baby medical students I run into, I'm like, you've got to find your hobby. You've got to find your passion. Please let it be exercise with some flavor and stick with it. Like that 30 minutes an hour a day investing in you is far more important than that couple of hours of studying, you know? Mm -hmm. Now that you're out of medical school and you're, you've graduated and now you're a doctor, um, was, are you able to incorporate jujitsu back into, I know you're in a different area, 
Um, and I'm sure that's a factor. But have you been able to kind of get back on the mat? I, I've seen you slowly peeking your head here and there into the jiu-jitsu world again. And I'm like, yes, come back, Hillary. We miss you. <laughs> I miss it. Man, I, uh, I so I didn't during residency. Um, but now I'm in fellowship, which is kind of like extra residency to sub-sub-specialize. Like I'm going to, like, you know, there's epileptologists. There's seizure doctors who did extra years of training. I'm doing extra years of training to become a movement disorder specialist. Um, oh. So Parkinson's, Huntington's, tremors, things like that. Um, and fellowship is almost like a normal human job. Like I'm not working 80 hours a week, six days a week. Uh, <laughs> like I work pretty normal hours. And so I, I got back on the mats and it was, it was really tough both physically and mentally, you know, I mean, it, you had to take a break for a much more serious reason, but you know, the, there's always those people who are like, Oh, it'll just come back. And you're like, liar. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I forgot half guard. Um, <laughs> so that's, it's been a challenge, but I found a really great gym here, Spartan that, um, they've helped me come back up and like, I was getting to where I was training and excited about training five days a week finally again uh when COVID happened oh dang <laughs> coming being out of the game for a little while and coming back in and looking at how much jujitsu has evolved and changed what are some things that stand out to you uh it's it's a lot more upside down um and <laughs> You know, it's, it's very, how can I, I mean, it's kind of like if you look at most sports, but if you look at like skateboarding or something from the nineties versus now, like it's, it's very stylized. It's still very technical and still has all the same fundamentals, but it's very stylized and people are just smarter and they're sharing more and they're getting more creative. Um, and it, you know, even like IBJJF had talked to me and they're like, we'd love to have you ref again sometime, but you got to start doing what they're doing. You know, like you got to learn these things before you can come out here and ref these things, which is thousand percent agree. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's crazy how much the game continues to evolve and how many women there are competing now. It's amazing. I, I love know. It. The uh, divisions are stacked. Oh I my love God. it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like it's like I have like ten favorite grapplers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know there's no one it girl anymore. There's like a whole bunch. No. There's a whole slew of them. Okay, I can't. I've never actually said her name out loud. Fion. Yes. yes. Fion. I think okay. I, I'm horrible okay. at pronunciation. <laughs> um, again, I'm a Southern American, so everything I say is typically offensive. Uh, just by nature of, of accent. Um, but I think that she is, aside from an incredible grappler, she's just dorky and precious, and I very much appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, and then, of course, like, I'm biased, but, you know, Carol uh, is, I love her to death. And Luana's not competing anymore, but that's, like, the cutest power couple. Um, oh, it's so hard to, it's so hard to pick. I know. There's so many. I know nowadays I remember it was like, okay, well, she's kind of the top female right now. Oh, there's another one. She kind right. of took over. Oh, there's another one. She kind of, but now that it, it's amazing to see how that spotlight can be shared. Yeah. And a large part of it is because there's so many more top level women mm -hmm. that are out there competing, refing, doing seminars, having a private presence online, teaching is yep. another one too. So oh, I love it. Moving forward and coming back into the jiu-jitsu world, what are some of your goals? Um, first and foremost, I want to be a good training partner. Uh, and then I, you know, I'd like to be that person that's helping my teammates be better. And right now I, I'm a little too slow and a little too uncoordinated, but I'm working on it. Um, and then teaching is my favorite thing. I love teaching so much. So I can't, uh, and beginners in particular, partially because both my music tastes and my jujitsu were back in 2009. Um, 
But that was my year. That was a good year. That was a good year, right? <laughs> that was a really good Except year. Except 2009 is the year that you got that picture from, which is when I decided to cut bangs at home. And oh god. Never, <laughs> they look great. They look great. <laughs> it was they were like halfway down my forehead. It was, it was real bad. It was real bad. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I'd love to teach beginners. I I don't know if I want to compete again. A lot of people ask me and it's it's definitely nowhere near the top priorities. Like I just want that health, that community, training partners and teaching for right now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think I think I have a feeling, and I may be wrong, but I have a feeling once you start getting your toes in a little bit deeper, that ambitious streak is going to come back. I hope. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, my my coaches, I don't think are ever going to let me exist in peace if I don't do Masters Worlds at least once. Hey, so, it is the best tournament. It's not like it was in 09. It has prestige now. <laughs> it's, the biggest, it's the biggest tournament, isn't it? Um, it's huge. And I, it's huge. I, I would like to go just for the, the experience. Um, and so my last match ever was Worlds of 2011. And uh, Ida, Ida, I can't pronounce anyone's names today. Um, Hansen threw me so hard with the hip toss that I had time to think about what I did wrong on the way to the ground. During the throw. <laughs> so, I was like, it'd be nice to have that not be the last match that I've had. <laughs> it was like 3.2 seconds of air time. But do you know, I, I don't remember that. So that's, I, I'm one of many, I'm sure. But do you know what I do remember is I remember that match with you and Gabby. That was an epic match. That was a battle in my that it, from an outside looking in. That was one of the most extreme battles I've ever seen. It it was a crazy match, and it's been weirdly reposted uh, a lot. Um, and I I love because one I'm not a judo person. I just Bruno Bastos taught me that like one series uh, before Abu Dhabi. He was like, in case you get an absolute. And, Ironically, it was for Gabby. He was like, in case Gabby pushes up against you, do this. And I figured I would try. Um, but, you know, Gabby and I have competed three times, and she crushed me the next two. So we need to be very upfront about that. <laughs> um, and I also, I, I hate the very not okay comments that tend to come about her when those yeah. things are put in. Yeah. Um, and like, People just, can I cuss? Is like a little small one. Go for it. Don't be a dick, y'all. Just don't. Mm -hmm. Like, just yeah. be nice people. <laughs> well, I think we forget that these are real people, and these are real people in a very small community. You know, yep. I, I think we put them up on this pedestal, but they still watch these things. They still read these comments. They still have feelings. And yeah. I think a lot of the time we kind of separate that as them being real because we put them up on these pedestals as these legends and they're not going to pay attention, but yeah, no, I agree. I think that it's unnecessary to rip each other down. I think yeah. there's more important things to put your energy into in this, this world. But, uh, so how, so I've seen you commenting a lot on what's going on right now, um, with the COVID and everything. I, I wondered if you had any thoughts on how, and I know, I know you're just coming back into jujitsu, but how do you think, and I know it's not your specialty, but how do you think that the, this, what we're going through right now could potentially impact jujitsu in the long run? Ooh, um, I know that's a big question. Uh, again, as you pointed out, not an epidemiologist, not an infectious disease expert, um, but I wish we would have done more aggressive cluster-based community testing and, uh, and cluster-based isolation rather than blanketed because in the states that are now getting hit with the second wave and never really got hit with the first wave, people have exhausted their quarantino meter. So they're going back even though things are worse now than they've ever been. You mm -hmm. know, we've got two and a half times as many COVID patients in my hospital currently as we ever had earlier when the gyms were shut down. So people oh, are going wow. back. I think 
but I think we can adapt and I think we can still do it. You know, I'm not going back right now because I have asthma and then like I'm in the OR twice a week with 70 year old patients. Like I just, it's just not worth me as a carrier risk. Mm -hmm. um, and, but if people are going to go back, I think that people should do um, like, I've seen it called quarantines um, <laughs> where you pick, ideally one but maybe like a group of three and y'all set up to alternate like where two of you are going to get classes at any given time and you just train with that group of three people um no shaking and bumping no hugging you know minimize the contact with people you don't have to have contact with um, and if you are going back to the gyms which i i understand our gyms have to thrive um but you know if you are going back, try to otherwise socially distance, you know, don't go to restaurants, don't go to the family reunion. Uh, you know, if you're going to expose yourself, try to not expose others. Um, and then I, face masks are not that bad. Like light movement drills, light rolling and stuff could be done with face masks during the bad part. But I understand that probably not realistically not going to happen. What advice would you have for someone that's just starting out who desires to live the lifestyle that you have? Uh, what advice do you have for somebody who, what steps could they take? Or do you have any advice in them, you know, in wanting to be on that journey and, and expectations that they should have? Um, I go for it because life is short, um, you know, but don't like one thing that always kind of bothered me was putting all literally all of the eggs in the basket you know you you have to have something just in case um even if it's not equally divided time like have another hobby have another passion that you're cultivating have another potential source of income and potential source of happiness you know we're seeing a lot of people now that are like oh well you know a lot of people's only thing that's keeping them from suicide is jujitsu, which like, that's not an okay mental health situation. That's, that's something that needs to be addressed. Your mental health should not teeter on, on one thing. And I understand that the mental health access in this country is incredibly poor. Yeah. Um, and so it's much more challenging than just saying that, but it, you know, you got to have something in case, uh, but otherwise like, Man, train, travel, host people at your house, do these reciprocal things, go to these girls and bees events. Man, uh, I need to go, uh, and I will when the world, the sky is falling a little bit less. Um, but uh, like, what else? Hustle. Like, I hustled. Um, yeah, you hustled hard. I would, I would like babysit the kids in kids class. Like, teaching kids class is a really good way to offset fees. Um, you know. A lot of a lot of times, offering to clean the gym isn't the thing anymore. Um, but just finding ways to be involved, teaching, helping, uh, offering to have people stop by your place when you come through, being a table worker at tournaments—all um, of this can help offset and help help you meet the right people that can be training partners one day. Uh, you know, rushing wasn't always the most fun in the moment. But the experiences that I had with the people that I worked with and the people that I met at those tournaments were uh, it's just irreplaceable. Oh, yeah. No, I think I think you did a lot of living in a very short time <laughs> in the jujitsu world, which was really awesome to see what. And, and I'm sure you have a lot of memories and stories. I'm going to close out with this. But what is your what is one of your most fond memories of during that time when jujitsu just encompassed your, most of your existence? Um, ooh, ooh. I know. Uh, <laughs> so probably, um, a, a couple, um, so cyborg, I've been through, I've been to five different, gyms of cyborgs the first one was in a second floor above a jewish sushi restaurant um mm -hmm. and then uh then it was another one and then it was a movie theater and we could go on top of the roof of the movie theater after class <laughs> on the beach and just look out and it was like wow. 
this is amazing. Um, and you know, for someone who I, you know, I never saw a beach, uh, except for every like six to 12 years when we would go to Florida. Um, mm. And uh, then in Rio, like uh, there have been a, a few times where I, you know, I've been sort of adopted by multiple families down there that there's no earthly way I would have ever met them otherwise. And just little things like going to little birthday parties and like walking down the streets with one of their kids. And I, you know, I read one of their kids a uh, storybook in Portuguese and I, I didn't understand half the words, but I could read them. Mm. Um, and <laughs> like, I just, it, it's just a sense of community and togetherness that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else. And I'm very mm -hmm. appreciative for it. Awesome. No, this gets awesome. I'm sure you have a lot to pull from, you know, as far as experiences go. But it was a pleasure having you on. I really Thank appreciate you. you taking the time out of your busy schedule to to jump on this with me and share your knowledge and your wisdom and your insight and your stories with us. It means a it lot. It's so good to see you. We you do too. More often, even if it's not live to everyone else. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. We do. We do. And and I, I still would love that actually the girls in Alabama have been asking about an event. So now that you're there, it would be phenomenal yeah. to have let's you do wait, something. Let's wait a few months, but then <laughs> yeah. we're not we're not quite planning anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the large groups, uh small space eh, I don't think that's kosher right now. <laughs> But well, thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, uh, for so being much. a part of this segment. Yes, thank you, Hillary, and I will see you again soon, hopefully. Sounds good. Bye. All right, take care. Bye.